so basically uh, this is the newest newest uh, technique i can say um, uh, it's basically unilateral biportal endoscopy assisted t lift so it is mis t lift which is an endoscopic assisted technique it's as new as uh, the first paper was presented just uh, four years ago in august 2017 so yeah that's really really brand new technique uh, as the name indicates uh, by portal we have two ports which are there on the same side of the midline one port is used for scope the other port is used for the passage of the instrument the sequence uh, for mis might be uh, you might put in the screws first they might then you might go for decompression but for this particular technique you have to have the decompression first you have to go with the cage insertion followed by the percutaneous pedicular fixation uh, you need some special instruments you need a video trolley you need a scope which can be either 0 degree uh, or 12 degree or a 30 degree it's a 4 mm scope which is not a working scope but it's just a visualization uh, scope uh, you need a shaver burr and a drill system and rf cautery some special ub instruments and the rest is all general open spine instruments uh the basic difference between any other uh the basic difference between any other uh, uh mis procedure and that of the uh, uh ub is that ub is a percutaneous procedure wherein the scope and the the, the working instruments they are going in the skin directly whereas the other system they have to have some sort of a retractor or a tube system to keep the uh, to keep the tissues open uh whereas here if you can see on this picture you have two ports which are going in uh, one from the cranial aspect one from the caudal aspect and the scope carries the irrigation fluid inside it causes the irrigation fluid to get accommodated on the uh, the working uh, the working area that is the interlamina space and the water itself flows out and this flow of irrigation fluid is what keeps the skin opening patent and is what allows the passage of the instruments inside so as you can see in this particular video the scope is going in from the uh, cranial aspects the irrigation fluid which is getting accumulated on the interlamina space is just freely flowing out initially yes we use a semi tubular uh, tube kind of a thing which is semi open and uh, it is used to keep the skin and the facial opening patent but that is just for the initial part of the surgery it can be removed later and directly this uh, instruments can be passed through the skin itself we do the procedure under general anesthesia in prone position with a special drape uh, which is there for the fluid collection uh, and we need cm radiography so let's just jump into this technique so we start by making three uh, lines here the first picture is the midline we mark the midline the second picture is the median pedicular line uh, and the third uh, line that we mark is the uh, roughly the midpoint of the transverse processes so when you have a patient who's uh, these three lines are the ones which you need to mark so the black line is the midline the red line is the median pedicular line and the blue line is the line joining the midpoint of the transverse process so as you can easily make out the black line which is the midline is always straight whereas the rest of the two lines they are slightly oblique as the as you know the pedicles they go on moving laterally as we move from upper lower upper to the lower levels so the red line and the blue line are slightly oblique Uh, when I have to consider uh, doing a decompression, my incision for UB will lie between the black and the red line. Meaning, I have to take my skin incisions between the spinous process and the medial part of the pedicle, so that I don't need to go too much laterally. I can go directly on the interlamina space, even to the contralateral side. But when I have to consider fusion, my incision starts from the red line; it goes up to the blue line. So, median pedicular line to the uh, midpoint of the transverse processes. is where my uh, incisions are going to be i can turn i can go obliquely go towards the midline then go laterally land on to the facet and do the work on the facet itself so let's see the case presentation uh, she is a 50 years old female patient she was operated for the last mobile segment it was a sacralized l5 so technically uh, last mobile segment was operated with open, open decompression uh, with posterior lateral grafting uh, intertransverse grafting was done Uh, in 2018 she presented to us somewhere in february this year 2021 and 3 uh, years later she had persistent back pain she had left sided radiculopathy uh, she had standing intolerance could not stand for more than 10 15 minutes and neurogenic claudication lasting for around 5 minutes uh, her motor and sensory examinations were absolutely normal this was her mri and if we just zoom in on the 
axial cuts you can see that uh, the cord is very well decompressed there is a laminectomy defect the spinous processes are gone but if you look at this particular region uh, you can see that the left sided facet has uh, hypertrophied and uh, that itself is causing the traversing node and the foraminal uh, region to be compressive causing uh, left sided lower limb radiculopathy when you look at her x ray on an ap you can clearly make out that there is a big laminectomy defect at the last uh, mobile segment and uh, on flexion extension views you can see that there is a grade 1 lysthesis at uh, the last mobile segment so the uh, the target point here was uh, we have to do uh, we have to stabilize the mobile segment because clearly the intertransverse uh, fusion that was attempted previously it has uh, not worked and uh, we also have to remove the, the whole of the left sided uh, facet so that to decompress the lateral recess and the traversing nerve root uh, so when i do uh, the picture on your left hand side is a normal triangulation point for a regular decompression procedure so when i have to do a decompression procedure my scopic port it comes from the cranial aspect my working port it comes from the uh, the caudal aspect and their meeting point is the upper laminospinal junction so if you are talking about l4 pi level at l4 uh, uh, lamina at the spinal laminar junction on the ipsilateral side that is the point where my two points meet each other and the triangulation happens whereas on the the picture on the right side you can see that the triangulation point when you are considering a revision is the facet joint so i have to directly land on to the facet joint because the already laminar defect is there so you have to have the closest uh, bony margin that uh, you can find and dock at that point and that's where you were, you were going to start with your procedure so the initial docking point is the facet joint on cm you put in the obturator you serially dilate the track you use those dilators as blunt dissectors you clear the soft tissue over the facet joint and then you put in your scope and you do the triangulation you confirm you confirm the same position on the cm you touch those two points and then you go in with the scope so before i start this video i'm standing on the left side of the patient so the left hand side uh, that is the 9 o'clock position is the head end of the patient the 3 o'clock position or the right hand side is the foot end of the patient the 12 o'clock is the medial side and the 6 o'clock is the lateral side so we directly land on to the facet joint and we start by exposing the uh, inferior facet we go up to the point where the the lowest part the tip of the inferior facet is visible we expose that point and we start using chisels uh, osteotomes or uh, curettes to uh, take off the inferior facet here uh, since the facial or the skin and the facial opening are initially very small so we used uh, we don't take the facet in total but we try and uh, make the bony cut small and preserve all the bone graft uh, this is the point where you have to do the blunt dissection that is the medial aspect of the inferior facet and the scar tissue the lateral aspect and the inferior aspect you can use your burrs till the point where you can actually expose the scar tissue so this is the scar tissue that is overlying the traversing nerve root you use this hook kind of a radio frequency you lift up the scar tissue you clear the root once you enter the lateral recess you can remove the remaining ligamentum flavum and you can see that the traversing root there is clearly exposed and the disc is also clearly exposed so you do discectomy you do uh, then you start using those shavers inside the disc space you do uh, uh, just the regular uh, cage side preparation you can see that the root is very well retracted now once you start moving to the bigger shavers you can go inside and uh, do your uh, end plate preparations do a complete uh, discectomy uh, you can actually go with the suture scope inside the disc and visualize both the cranial as well as the caudal end plates that they are very nicely denuded you put in the bone graft and uh, you again confirm that those end plates are looking beautiful they are just bleeding nicely you retract the traversing root again and with the the proper size peak cage you go inside the cage can be repositioned if required later on also and that's the end point of the surgery where you see the free traversing nerve root and the cage is sitting inside now the same two incisions have been extended slightly laterally and used for ped percutaneous pedicular fixations 
and uh, only percutaneous pedicular fixation is done again on the contralateral side and this is the final picture in front of you uh, the picture on the left hand side you can see that there is a midline big incision which was for the previous open laminectomy as well as there is a left sided incision which was taken for the bone graft purposes and you can compare the size of the incisions with the incisions that we have uh, done the incisions on the left side they were used for uh, this uh, initial uh, the scopic and the working portal and again the same incisions were converted uh, utilized for percutaneous pedicular fixation on the opposite side a single incision and percutaneous fixation was done for the contralateral side the patient is mobilized as soon as they are comfortable out of anesthesia maybe the same day evening maybe the next day and they are mobilized and the rest of the protocol is quite similar to any other open procedure so what we are trying to do here is the versatility of tubular decompression and adding the advantages of uh, endoscopic visualization and combining those two into uh, utilizing uh, in the form of uh, unilateral biportal endoscopy where the major advantage is the fluid medium surgery you have an excellent uh, visualization and a plane of dissection with excellent bleeding control the anatomy is very much familiar so except for the initial triangulation part there is nothing new whatever we have seen in dr tushar's presentation it is exactly the same but the anatomy is so close it is so magnified and uh, you get a perfect uh, ease of approach doing that better visualization good bleeding control it's a direct access to the pathology with no or minimal interference to the previous scar tissue so i think those are the advantages when we are trying to consider uh, uh, a in a revision case so with that uh, i would in my presentation